May 14, 2010, Kaunas. Game 4 of the Lithuanian Basketball League finals between Žalgiris Kaunas and Lietuvos Rytas Vilnius. Two days ago, Žalgiris' owner fired the coaching staff and now the two main players of Žalgiris are both playing and coaching the team. The fans are absolutely furious and with the series being 2-1 in favor of Ritas, it is a do-or-die situation. But how did one of the best teams in Europe end up in this mess? Let's take a step back to unpack this story. Let that sink in. A Euroleague team that's playing in the domestic finals is coached by two of their players. To begin to understand how Žalgiris Kaunas ended up in such a ridiculous scenario, we have to get to the root of it. To a man who quickly went from being the savior of the team to the cause of its demise, Vladimir Romanov. Romanov was the founder and main shareholder of Ukyo Bankas, one of the first commercial banks in Lithuania that was based in Kaunas. Mr. Romanov was always fond of sports. Most notably, before becoming the owner of Žalgiris, he already had a majority stake in a Scottish football club, Edinburgh Hearts. Surely we could dive into the disastrous impact he had on that football team, but that would require another video. Hearts are facing fresh threats of liquidation. Shareholder Ukyo Bankas confirmed that all three bids to buy the club have fallen short. A year prior to the infamous LKL finals, the Russian-born businessman had acquired a 75% stake in the team, saving the Lithuanian powerhouse from bankruptcy and pledging to invest around 15 million euros into the club. Right away, the Romanov era began with controversy. Entering the 09-10 season, the team was still coached by Gintaras Krapikas. After an extensive losing streak, coach Krapikas left the team and was replaced by another famous Lithuanian coach, Ramunas Bututas. Bututas' tenure lasted even shorter as he was fired after only six weeks. But firing these coaches in such a short period of time wasn't even the craziest thing that took place. Apparently, Vladimir Romanov was was not satisfied with just observing the team's play, but also wanted to have an influence. Despite not even knowing the rules of basketball prior to acquiring Žalgiris, the owner of the team was in charge of player rotations. His method became infamous as Romanov would write down how many minutes each player should play and when they should be substituted on a piece of paper, later handing it to the head coach before each game. You might be thinking, how did this team owner who was completely incompetent in basketball would decide how much someone should play. Well, it turns out Romanov had a special machine that estimated the player's physical and emotional condition. The players had to put their fingers into this device and the results would occur. If the skin gas analyzer liked you that day, you would be playing big minutes next game. Just take a few deep breaths, and I'll just get a base reading of your Thetan levels. Huh, that's… that's strange. At the time, people were speculating whether such a phenomenon was really taking place or it was just rumored, but coaches and players confirmed that years later. So here we are, in the middle of the season, with two coaches already being fired. And then came Darius Maskolunas, the assistant coach who got promoted to the head coaching spot. It seemed like Maskolunas managed to survive the Romanov regime and was heading to coach the team in the domestic league finals against their arch-rival, Lietuvos Rytas Vilnius. Žalgiris won the first game in Vilnius by 13 points and were going to host Lietuvos Rytas for game two. Unfortunately for Maskolunas, losing was not an option in Romanov's Žalgiris. Regardless of a convincing victory in game one, the club fell at home in the next match and that was the beginning of the end 
and for Moscolunas. As the team was getting ready to travel for Game 3 in Vilnius, Romanov showed up at the bus before the departure and announced to everyone that the coach was fired. Players did not receive these news fondly and protested the owner's decision by not boarding the bus if the coach was not coming with them. Both parties came to a compromise as the players promised to win the next game and Mr. Romanov gave the last opportunity to Moskolunas. The promise was not fulfilled as Žalgiris lost the game by two points and the coach was sacked. Pasako oficialios Žalgirio internetinės svetainės, Moskolūnas atleistas, nes nevykdė priimtų įsi parigojimų ir tuo atkreditavo klubo vardą. Romanov showed no mercy and did not even let the coach say farewell to the players, furthermore releasing a club statement saying that Moskolūnas lost the game on purpose. Finding a new coach in such a short time was not an easy task for Romanov, who was already seen as a madman. At first, the position was offered to the assistant coach of Moskolunas. After he declined such a prestigious offer, Romanov went to the club's sports director, who also said no. He went so far as to offering the head coaching seat to the team's doctor. No one wanted to be a part of his circus, so Romanov decided that Jalgiris doesn't need any coaches and the team will be run by the players themselves. To make it more appealing to the players, he offered them 3,000 euros bonuses for every win and 1,000 if the team loses. It was announced that Dainus Shalanga, the captain of the team, will be both playing and coaching the team in the next game. And now we arrive back where we started, Game 4 in Konas. During the team introduction of Žalgiris, the newly elected head coach Shalanga reacts in a way that says it all. The fans of the team are absolutely furious with Romanov's decisions. This was probably best illustrated by them holding a poster with Saint Buratino, the Soviet version of Pinocchio, to the mental hospital, written on it and carrying it around the court throughout the game. The main fan group of the team also held up posters with Romanov's face and money symbols crossed out and one of them stating, honor cannot be bought. Head coach Shalanga scored 13 points, Žalgiris won the game 83-70 and tied up the series 2-2. But it turned out the captain wasn't the only one coaching the team. Euroleague legend Marcus Brown got very involved on the sidelines. Hence, the situation became even more bizarre as two active players were giving instructions to the other players during the timeouts and when they were on the bench. Marcus Brown's voice seemed to be the louder one and it was announced that he will be the head coach next game. Not only that, but Brown was also going to run the team's practices. Years later, Marcus Brown revealed that nobody asked if he was up for the challenge, but he didn't have a choice. Despite losing Game 5, Brown was kept as the playing head coach. Žalgiris managed to survive the next game and the series went to Game 7. Oh, remember those bonuses promised by Romanov? Well, he fulfilled his promise and the players received the money in cash. You can only imagine the sight of the millionaire coming to the locker room and handing cash to the players from a bag with a dollar sign on it. To be fair, all this insanity could have ended on a high note, but the final game of the series saw their main rivals Lietuvos Rytas winning and being crowned the champions of the Lithuanian Basketball League. The current owner of Žalgiris, Paulus Motejunas, who was the manager of the team at the time, recalled that one morning Romanov gave him two pieces of paper, which read Pau Gasol, Kobe Bryant, and Romanov told him to check those two out. Five minutes later, after checking their salaries on the internet, Motejunas came back to him saying, one costs 20 million, the other 19. Romanov was silent for a second and then said, Oh, okay. This perfectly illustrates how delusional and oblivious Romanov was during his time at Žalgiris. After the bankruptcy of Ukio Bankas in 2013, he left the team trying to avoid the Lithuanian authorities and got the political shelter in Russia. As Marcus Brown later recalled the 0910 season, it was insane. But it helped me to start my coaching career. If you enjoyed this video and would like more content like this, make sure to subscribe and follow basketnews.com.